Hello there and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about cross-faction grouping in patch 9.2.5 and we're going to go through the entire system, how it works, what you can and can't do, and just some overall thoughts what they can do in the future with it. But before we jump into that guys, I just want to shout out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash MrGM. If you want to see me streaming World of Warcraft, patch 9.2 PTR, 10.0 alpha beta and beyond, I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. Right, so yes, cross-faction grouping is coming in patch 9.2. 2.5 you can jump into instances and all kinds of things with your horde and alliance buddies but there is some restrictions to it and there are some certain things that you can't do with cross-faction and we're going to go over it right now so let's start with some general points for the system so what can you do well this is only for instance content so that will be mythic plus rated pvp and raids including legacy raids however there are some raids and dungeons which aren't going to be cross-faction for the time being that includes trial of the champion trial of the crusader vault of archivon ice crown citadel baron and hold siege of boralis Battle for Desire Law and the Dark Maul Citadel, which is the Exile Reach dungeon. Unfortunately, as well, random matchmaking activities such as LFR, normal and heroic dungeons, arena skirmishes, or random battlegrounds are actually going to stay same faction, which I'll be honest, is kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like this would have been the perfect time to add that, as there is mercenary mode, obviously, with random battlegrounds, and I think that would have been perfect for these matchmaking activities. I feel like it's an even easier task than making it uh, for the other ones, but yeah, so those things will remain same faction for the time being in 9.2.5. Another thing you can't do while in a cross-faction group is outside world content. Now, I'm gonna go over the more specifics of this in a little bit, but yeah, you can't go and do world quests and things like that with your cross-faction buddy, uh, it is literally just exclusive to instance content. Now once 9.2.5 does launch, you can't just walk up to a random player of the opposite faction and invite them. There is some specific prerequisites that you have to do to activate this feature. Now if you want to just walk up to someone and do slash invite, you actually have to be a Battle.net friends with them or in a cross-faction WoW community, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Another way to group with the opposite faction is through the pre-made group finder, and this is more than likely going to be the main way to get into cross-faction groups and make the most out of this brand new feature. Now obviously with the pre-made group finder you can make groups for mythic dungeons, raids or rated pvp and this is now open to both factions although the leader can actually choose to restrict it to the same faction if they want to but I don't know why they would do that but if they really 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 like the horde they can make it so just horde players can see the listing. Now communities. Communities are going to be a huge thing in patch 9.2.5. Now if you don't know WoW communities have been around for a little bit now in the game it's just in the guild tab and in my personal experience I haven't used it a ton but I do think it will have a bit of a renaissance in 925 because essentially this is going to work like a cross faction and cross server guilds because as of 9.2.5 guilds will remain single faction. Now communities have a bunch of features as well like you can make events, you can do messages of the day, you can essentially do pretty much everything you can do in a guild but in a WoW community and if you have an existing WoW community you can enable that for cross faction once 925 launches. Okay so that's covering the basics of cross faction now let's talk about what you can and can't do in the outside world and inside an instance. This is all stuff that I tested on stream with viewers and yeah shout out to them for helping out with this and if you want to help out in future you twitch TV slash Mr. Gem, just saying. Anyway, outside world stuff. So, once you're in a group with the opposing faction, there are a couple things you can't do in the outside world. You can't use their portals, you can't get buffed, you can't use their multi-person mounts, you can't trade with them. As I mentioned, you can do slash invite only if you're in a community or BNet friends. If you're not, then no, you can't invite them. Uh, you can summon the other faction to a dungeon. However, you will need your faction to help you. So yeah, if you're like, you know, one horde and four alliance, it's going to be a bit awkward uh, if the horde gets there first because they won't have anyone to help them summon the alliance players. Now, this is really interesting. So you can send money and items to other faction alts on your account on the same realm. Money and items. So gold can be transferred between the horde and alliance on your own account on the same realm. However, you can't send mail to other factions, even if you're in a community with them or a Battle.net friend. If you're out in the world and you die, single target res doesn't work, but mass resurrection does work cross-faction. And slash say and yell and things like that do work if you're in a group you can understand the opposite faction. However, if you're not in a group with them, and even if you're in a community or Battle.net friends with them, you still can't understand what they say until you actually are in a physical group 
with the opposite faction. Another fun interaction we did test is war mode. If you're in war mode and you're in a cross faction group and you're in the outside world, you can actually kill each other. Yeah, you can actually just murder each other. You can summon your opposite faction friend and just obliterate them instantly. So feel free to troll people with that if you're in war mode. It's a lot of fun. Now, let's talk about inside the instance. Once you've gathered up, you've joined groups, you've got inside the instance, this is where it actually gets pretty good because you can do essentially everything you can do with your regular players. So you can get buffed, you can use multi-person mounts, you can trade gold and items if on the same realm. So cross-faction trading can only happen inside the instance, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you can use their portals, but only use the neutral portal. So you can't just accidentally click a Stormwind portal if you're on the Horde and vice versa, uh, which is pretty good. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Now, Here's the interesting thing, this took a lot of testing and we're still not 100% on this, but bear with me. Dungeon specific bosses. So the example I can give here is the Nexus. In the Nexus, there is an Alliance Commander boss or a Horde Commander boss, depending on your faction. Now what we could gather is it does actually spawn the specific boss of that faction, depending on who goes in the dungeon first. So if an Alliance character goes in the dungeon first, it doesn't matter if they're a leader or not, the boss will be the Horde Commander and the Horde will be able to kill that boss as well. That's how that works. So essentially it is whoever enters the dungeon first. However, we did find some weird things with like the Halls of Reflection would only spawn Sylvanas instead of Jaina. So we're not really sure how that works. Specifically, maybe certain dungeons uh, canonically are only going to be a certain way in a, in a cross-faction group. We're not actually sure on that. I'm sure Blizzard will clarify it very soon. So yeah, inside a dungeon, you're essentially just the same faction. You can do basically everything you can do uh, with your regular faction. And that's really cool. And that's exactly how we expected it to work. So yeah, that's basically everything with cross-faction grouping in 925. I apologize if there are some things that I didn't cover in this video and please leave a comment below. I'll try and reply if you do have any burning questions on cross-faction stuff. We are going to continue to test it and break it on stream, of course, because that's where the fun is. We actually broke Ice Crown Citadel on the PTR and it was a lot of fun with cross-faction and it got really broken. I actually uploaded that video to my second channel if you want to check that out. Uh, I do have a second channel which is like Twitch clips and highlights and things like that. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link below. Uh, so yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. Before I go, I'd like to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons, YouTube channel members and Twitch subs. You guys are amazing. If you'd like to support the channel in any of those ways, links are down below. So leave a like on this video, guys, if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. I've also got a partner Discord channel with over a few thousand members. And as I said, I'm now streaming on twitch.tv slash MrGM. You want to see me streaming World of Warcraft, patch 9.2.5, 10.0, Wrath Lich King Classic, any sort of World of Warcraft, guys. I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. And with that, guys, I'll see you next time.